1999, the Columbine High School shooting happened. 13 students and teachers were killed and over 20 others were victims or injured. It's been speculated that one of the reasons this shooting occurred was because the shooters were bullied, either physically or verbally. So this shooting, in conjunction with recent cases that have um, resulted in suicide based on bullying experiences, have resulted in an increased attention being given to bullying cases. It should come as no surprise that kids in middle school often experience bullying. They're bully victims, they're bully perpetrators, or they fall into this special group known as both perpetrators and victims. These bully experiences have been linked to serious psychological consequences, for example, anxiety, depression, and even suicide. So then it's important to understand what factors are putting youth at risk for these bully experiences. Is it individual factors like self-control or coping skills? Is it peer factors, school, neighborhood, family factors? That's where my research aims to make an impact. So my research will identify specific and unique groups of bullying, look at the similarities and differences in risk factors across these groups. So for example, do perpetrators, victims, and the special overlap group, do they have the same risk factors? Then I will look at the antisocial behavior, um, differences and similarities in these groups as well. After this, I will look and see if bullying behavior is stable or if youth transition into and out of bullying groups as they move throughout middle school. And finally, I'll look at the risk factors that predict stability or change in these groups as well. But why is this important and why should you care? It's important to identify the risk factors that put youth at risk for bullying because we need to know whether intervention needs across these groups are similar or different. Additionally, if we can identify the risk factors, then we can target them and aim to reduce bully experiences as well as antisocial behavior like delinquency or substance use. So state, there's, all states have laws and policies that protect against bullying, but schools are not mandated to implement these policies. So findings from my research could demonstrate and provide support for implementing school policies that link services with bullying behavior. So for example, linking psychological services to bully victims. More importantly, my research could demonstrate that bullying behavior is not static, but rather changes over time, and we should focus on risk factors and get youth the support they need to be successful in middle school. Thank you.